Four months ago, I went to a conference on aging in Washington, D.C., and I was by far the youngest person there. People came up to me and asked, what are you doing here? Why are you here? I am here to tell you why. Raise your hand if you are aging. Everyone's hand should be up right now. In fact, our world population is aging. According to the National Institute of Health, the number of older adults is expanding three times the amount in just 40 years to 1.5 billion people in 2050. We have to act now. This is my grandmother. She is about to turn 102 in just a few weeks on April 27th. She has 10 grandchildren and 16 great-grandchildren. When she was 85 years old, she broke her pelvis in two places and fully recovered. Now, you must be thinking, 102, that's incredible. I want to live until I'm 102. What is her secret? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. But she did live most of her life disease-free. And when something did go wrong, she quickly recovered. So what can we do to allow ourselves to live longer and healthier? We must strive to live healthier and longer. Throughout this talk, I am going to walk you through a framework of three tools so that we can be proactive about our health and that we can strive to live and age purposefully. When I was around, my journey started when I was around 12 years old. My mother had Lyme disease. This was really challenging because I was the first person to deal with this process because I was the one who treated her. I had to figure out how to treat my mother at 12 years old. Yet 10 years later, she still had chronic Lyme disease. It was upsetting and frustrating to know how to deal with this process. And I wanted to focus on how we as individuals can prevent ourselves from aging and prevent ourselves from getting diseases and chronic diseases. I asked my family recently, what keeps you young? My uncle said, the thought that I can do whatever I want. My aunt laughed and said, until you realize you can't, until you realize you can't. But what if we can? I am here to tell you that we can. According to the National Council on Aging, 80% of older adults aged 65 and older have at least one chronic disease, and 68% have two. Chronic disease are diseases that persist over time. Diseases like dementia, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, sensory loss, depression, the list goes on. But we have the resources today to do something about this and reduce and potentially even prevent this process from happening. How can we do this? It became my passion as I got my master's in biotechnology and then started a company in, disease and in drug discovery because I was passionate about finding specific and pre precise therapeutics for, for diseases that are chronic. I became passionate, I had a purpose to focus on personalized, proactive aging, because this was something that affected everyone. All of us are affected by this, and we can do something about this. So what can we do? Well, I started becoming extremely passionate about this field 
because when I was only in fifth grade, I was in a classroom and I, was, I learned that during school that for, for us to be healthy, we can drink red wine. So naturally, I went home, poured myself a glass of wine, sat on, the, sat on the couch, glass in one hand, book in another, and started sipping away. My mom came into the room and said, Liana, what are you doing? You're 10. You can't drink red wine. I said, I learned in class that this was important for my health. Why not start now? I was being proactive about my health. Was I, though? The problem was I misinterpreted the information that I got. Yes, red wine could potentially have health benefits, but not for a 10-year-old. Studies have shown that nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress, and, and relationships are important for our health. But that all depends on how we do it. We are all different individuals, and it seems great in pre and when we think about it, but it is very complicated when it comes into practice. We all have different wants and needs, different motivations, different personalities, different biologies, different lifestyles, different environments. We have to approach this in a different personalized way, different ages, because clearly that was my problem. This is really important, especially when the, word that the, the world that we are in right now is complex. We are trying to live healthier for longer when everything depends. It depends. How we deal with our health depends on us as individuals because we are all so different. It depends on so many different factors and we have to figure out how to deal with that. So I'm going to walk you through three different tools that we can use so that we can focus on our health to live healthier for longer. The first tool is mapping. Mapping is what we want. What do we want? The second is testing, what we have. The third is monitoring, how we change. These tools can be used throughout our lives so that we can determine what is right for us as individuals because that is important for how we age successfully. So let's start with mapping. Mapping is what we want. What do we want in our lives? What do we want? What do you want to achieve? in your late in life goals. What do you want to focus on? What do you want to do? Lionel Messi once said, it took me 17 years and 114 days to become an overnight success. He envisioned his goal, took the necessary steps and strategized so that he can become the best soccer player in the world. He was able to take a visual representation, mapping, and actually put it into fruition. Now, we can't all become the best soccer player of all time. But what we can do is we can focus on our health in a very proactive way. And we can strive to live until we're 100 years old. We say all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? To kids, all the time, we ask them this. What do you want to be when you grow up? And they answer, I want to be an astronaut, or a doctor, or a cook, or a teacher, whatever it is. But then we stop, answer, we stop answering this question. Why? Because nobody asks us anymore. I am here to ask you. What do you want to do in your life? What do you want to do in your life when you grow up? When I grow up, I want to be able to sit on the floor and play with my grandchildren. 
I want to be able to carry my own groceries. I want to be able to dance the night away. And I want to be able to have stimulating conversations with the people I love and care about. What do you want to do when you grow up? This starts with mapping. Ask yourself today and write them down. Let's move on to testing. What is testing? Testing is what we have or what we don't have. It is the absent, determining the absence and the presence of diseases in your body. It can help detect, diagnose, assess severity, and, treat, and figure out the right treatments for diseases earlier on in your life. We are in an incredible time right now where new testing innovations are coming out that are less invasive, that have higher accuracy, and that are easier to use so that they are more accessible for us. This is an incredible time to determine what tests are right for us as individuals. We must also, though, consider that not tests are for everybody. We have to understand the drawbacks as well as the benefits of tests. If you have a history, a family history of cancer or of heart disease, it could be important for you to get tests at a different rate than the regular population. Your primary care physician can help you deal with this process because it is ever changing and it de depends on you. So let's go to our last one, monitoring. How we change. Monitoring allows us to determine how we can stay on track with our mapping and testing, with our goals, and determine what is changing in our body. Mapping allows us to take the things, put them into action. I mean, monitoring allows us to take these things, put these into action, and understand how they impact our body. We monitor all the time without even realizing. We monitor with our watches and our phones, how many steps we have, our fitness, our nutrition, our mental health. There's so many things that we are monitoring and that we monitor all the time. Right now, my watch is monitoring my heart rate, which is probably higher than it normally is because I'm giving this TED Talk. But Monitoring is super, super helpful in the process because we change all the time. And if we're adding interventions in our body, if our body becomes irregular, or if we're improving or not, we should be able to determine that in our body. That is why monitoring is so important. However, monitoring and testing should also be thought through behaviors. We are all different when it comes to behaviors. Sometimes monitoring for us is really great because it motivates us to eat healthy. It motivates us to go the extra mile. It motivates us in different ways. But sometimes it can make us anxious that we're not necessarily doing the right thing. Or maybe that we didn't necessarily go for that run today. It can make us anxious sometimes as well. Or maybe we don't fully understand the data. We have to figure out the right monitoring and testing for us, as well as mapping. I started mapping in 2017 when I lived in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Now, I have the biggest sweet tooth of all time. And so naturally, I thought it would be a great idea to eat all of the different pastries <laughs> that I could in Denmark. And I was pretty successful at it. However, I started to realize that I was becoming pre-diabetic and that made me extremely concerned that was this going, all of this sugar, was that going to affect me in my life in the future? Was that going to prevent me from getting to the goals that I want to pursue later in my life? These are thoughts that came into my mind and I started mapping. I started figuring out what did I need to do as an individual to prevent my, as an individual to prevent myself from getting to that point that I was hurting myself so that I was preventing myself from getting to those goals.
I started testing my, my sugar and monitoring my sugar intake. It started by something simple as just writing on a piece of paper whenever I ate something like a, a sugary food. I started simple. You can start wherever you want with mapping, monitoring, and testing. It is up to you to decide what your journey is and how you are going to bring all of these in. Mapping, testing, and monitoring are not a linear process. They are a framework for you to decide how they are all going to intertwine together like I did with my sugar. But this is not something that stopped with my sugar. This is something that continued throughout my entire life and is going to continue throughout my life. Just like this can continue in your life, you have to determine how mapping, testing, and monitoring are right for you to personalize that so that you can live healthier for longer. This is my grandmother and me. When I look at my grandmother, I can't help but thinking how important mapping, testing, and monitoring are for our future. My grandmother is so extremely resilient, and we can all be too. She used to tell me all the time, Liana, pursue your goals no matter what. If the front door is closed, there is always another door. You will find that other door door. We all have different goals. We all have different limitations. But we can find those goals and focus on our health by finding those doors. Mapping, testing, and monitoring are the keys. We have the rest of our lives to focus on our health and live healthier for longer. So let's start now.